John Imani William is a servant of God anointed into apostolic office with divine purpose to proclaim the undiluted gospel truths and empower and equip the body of Christ and bring about spiritual transformation in people's lives, cities and nations. He is a dynamic preacher and author of more than 30 book titles. He is the founder and general overseer of Kingdom Seekers Fellowship Church based in Kenya. Under Apostle Kimani's leadership, the ministry has an outreach missionary arm called Missions to the Body of Christ International, MBCI. He is also an established MBCI media consisting of a national television, MBCI TV and MBCI radio. The ministry owns the largest prayer center in Kenya, known as Heaven's Gate Prayer Mountain. Apostle Jod Kimani Williams' destiny-defining teachings and influence have made him a polarizing figure, with supporters praising his emphasis on faith, Christian living, teachings on destiny, a prayer warrior, and great revivalists of our time. He is happily married to Reverend Naomi Kimani and are blessed with their children. Rema Fist 2023, let us be upstanding. And with a Jesus salvation, it's my singular honor to welcome Apostle John Kimani Williams. Make it louder for Jesus! We give you praise, our God. Let us celebrate Jesus this morning. It is a good thing to praise the Lord. We give you praise and glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. God bless you. We can take our seats. I'm humbled this morning to get another opportunity to stand before all of you and those who are watching online to be able to share the word of God with us and uh, I've also come here because I have a heart that is willing and desiring to receive from God every time even as I minister the word of God I allow the same word to speak to my life because the word of God is a double-edged sword. We celebrate the servant of God once again, the convener of this meeting, the Benjurian in absentia. And we also celebrate all our fathers. We have our father here, JB, Bishop JB Masinde, and our mom. Thank you very much for the love and accepting us as our sons in this generation. I also celebrate my dear wife, Reverend Naomi. Amen. She's a great blessing to my life. I hope also our newest city in Kenya, Nakuru, is represented in this meeting. Do I have people from Nakuru? Yeah, I can hear you. Um, I want to use the time that I have to continue with the message I started yesterday. And I want to share with us on how you can be able to set your personal standards. Because I believe all of us are concerned that the standards in our generation have been lowered so low that anyone who says praise the Lord kila mtu akichukua hii microphone aseme bwana asifiwe huyo ameokoka anaenda binguni na pengine amesema bwana asifiwe kwa sababu ako kanisani because some people who just say praise the lord when they are in the church compound but when they are out there they don't they have nothing to do with jesus my personal conviction is that God desires to raise the standards once again. And if anyone desires to be used of God in this season, they must consider the biblical standards, not even the standards of your denomination, the standards of the Bible. Because the Bible is our operation manual. 
And when I read, as I said, from Genesis to Revelation, I always see God speaking about standards for everything, even standards for blessings. Because as much as we have promises, they are all conditional. There is a condition you must fulfill for you to receive that blessing. And so it's very, very important for us as a church to see that uh, we are up to the standard so that we don't miss the window of opportunity that God has given us in this season. Because as I say that God, our God is in a class of his own. He says beside me there is no other God. He told the children of Israel if you are going to worship me then there should be no other God. And Jesus came with the same words and he said, if you want to be my disciple, you have to hate your brother, your mother, uh, your sister, your brother, even your own self. Jesus was simply saying, I'll only take the first position, not the second position. This kingdom is a kingdom of divine standards. And as I say that God has given us grace not to lower the standards but to raise the standards. The grace is not there to be taken for granted. It is there to help us to raise the standard. Jesus said in the book of Matthew chapter 5 and verse uh, 17 Matthew chapter 5 and verse 17 that he did not come to abolish the law. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets i have not come to abolish them but to fulfill them jesus came because there were gaps in the law because the law was written in tablets of stone but he came now to change our hearts and light his laws by his spirit in our hearts so he came to fulfill so many people would say oh I don't care what was happening under the law in the Old Testament, but Jesus said, I have come to fulfill. When sometimes I look at some of the standards that God has set for priesthood, if you read the book of Leviticus, chapter 1, chapter 21, and verse 10, God has set very high standard for priesthood. He said, uh, the high priest, the one among his brothers, who has the anointing oil poured on his head and who has been ordained to wear the priestly garments must not let his hair become unkept or tear his lobes. These are standards. He must not enter a place where there is a dead body. He must not make himself unclean even for his mother or mother nor leave the sanctuary of his God or desecrate it because he has been dedicated by the anointing oil of his God. I am the Lord. Then the Bible continues to say, the woman he marries must be a virgin. Just imagine that when you are a priest and the anointing oil has been poured upon you, God set the terms and conditions for your hair, for your clothing, and even the wife you are supposed to marry. And I want to tell all the young people here, if God has called you into the work of the ministry, take care of the one who marries you. That is one of the doors that the enemy uses to destroy callings. If you don't want to be destroyed, uh, pray and tell God, show me the one I am going to marry who is compatible with my calling with my assignment who is going to be my helper to fulfill my divine assignment if you jump to verse 16 I, I just want you to see that the Bible is a book of standards the Lord said to Moses uh -huh. verse 17 let's continue say to Aaron for the generations to come none of your descendants who has a defect may come near to offer the food of God of his God no man who has any defect may come near. No man who is blind or lame or disfigured 
or deformed no man with a crippled foot or hand or who is a hunchback or a dwarf or who has any eye defect or who has festering or running sores or damaged testicles no descendants of Aaron the priest who has any defect is to come near me to present the food offerings to the Lord he has a defect he must not come to offer the food of his God it may not be applied in the same way in the New Testament but I can tell you God is a God of standards he said the standards of those who are going to come before him and offer the sacrifices you may decide to lower the standards but I can tell you God has not changed he still requires very high standards and the grace of God can help us to be able to set those standards I want to show you a number of parameters that can help you to set your personal standards number one standards are set by the liberation that you have as our father Bishop Masinda was teaching us here yesterday liberation is key God has revealed himself to each one of us differently and God requires you to be faithful to the liberation he has given unto you in the book of Daniel chapter 5 and verse 22 one of the reasons Belshazzar was judged by God it is because there are things that he knew the Bible says but you Belshazzar his son have not humbled yourself though you knew all this there is something Belshazzar knew he knew why his father or grandfather Nebuchadnezzar was judged but the Bible says he did not choose to humble himself although he knew all this what happened to him verse 23 the Bible says instead you have set yourself up against the Lord of heaven you have had the goblets from his temple uh -huh. therefore he sent the hand that wrote this in the inscription we know the inscription this is the inscription that was written mene mene tekel palsin this means uh, here is what these words mean mene god has numbered the days of your reign and brought it to an end why you have been weighed on the scales and found wanting job said god weigh me on your honest scales there is a way god knows how to weigh men and he can be able to weigh you according to what he has revealed to your life the bible says the servant who knows to do his master's will and he has he doesn't do it he is beaten with many strokes because you know what you are supposed to do praise the name of the living god what liberation have you received galatians chapter 6 verse 4 and verse 5 the Bible says that we should not compare ourselves. Galatians chapter 6 uh, verse 4. And verse 5, uh, you are not supposed to compare yourself. The Bible says uh, each one should test their own actions. Then they can take pride in themselves alone. Without comparing themselves uh, to someone else. Why? For each one should carry their own load praise the name of the living God let me combine this with another parameter that can help you to set your standard the parameter of spiritual maturity have you ever thought of a church as a school where all the peoples pupils and the students they are combined in one class from baby class pp1 pp2 grade 1 to 6 up to university they are all seated here so if you compare yourself with another person and maybe the person seated next to you is in baby class 
praise the name of the living God. That is why they are chatting as the meeting continues. Praise the name of the living God. But some of us, we need to honor God with all and reverence because of the way he has revealed himself to us. We are not at the same level of spiritual maturity. So the church is not divided like a school. People come in the same class. But they are in different grades. They are in different levels. We have some people here doing their masters spiritually. Praise the name of the living God. How do you compare with yourself with someone in PP1? Huh? And you are doing your masters. You cannot compare yourself. That is why even when you are fasting... When you are setting the standard, allow the babies to continue eating and they are fasting. Because they are babies. Praise the name of the living God. But some of you, even taking water, you need to ask heaven. Depending on the kind of fast you are taking. Praise the name of the living God. Maturity helps us to set standard. The Bible in the book of Hebrews, Paul is saying, Although now you ought to be teachers, you need to be given spiritual milk. You are supposed to be at a level of maturity where you can disciple others. But now you have not been able to grow. You cannot be able to mature people, uh, people who are able to take up responsibility. And remember, when we believed in John 1, 12, the Bible says we were given power, the light, to become children. But the Bible says as long as a heir is a child, he cannot be given their inheritance. Inheritance is not given to children. Praise the name of the living God. So it is kept for you until uh, when you are mature and that is why the bible says uh, in Romans 8 14 uh, as many as are led by the spirit uh, of the living God they are the sons so you must learn how to live uh, a spirit led life for you to receive uh, your inheritance some of you want to receive your inheritance and you have not matured to know how to be led of the Holy Spirit. Because it is a spirit who has a master plan, the blueprint for your destiny. He said, separate me, Paul and Barnabas, for the work I have called them to do. He knows your assignment. He knows your mandate. He knows how he can be able to position you in the right geographical position. Where you can be able to receive uh, your inheritance. But you have not been able to mature your spiritual senses. You know when babies are born, uh, their, their, their physical senses are not mature. But as they grow, their physical senses mature. That is the same case uh, with our spiritual life. Uh, our spiritual senses uh, need to mature that we can hear from God. For my sheep uh, hear leather, my voice. Praise the name of the living God. So the question is, what is the level of your maturity? How can you afford to compare yourself with others? There are people who have lived in the church for 10, 20 years, but they have never grown spiritually. Spiritual maturity is not about age. It's not even about when you are born again. Praise the name of the living God. Hallelujah. Some of you, you are doing your first project because you need to graduate. And your project is your husband. Praise the name of the living God. And the angels in heaven have already defended that project. And they have said, uh, the way this man, woman is wired and the assignment, this is a project they are going to undertake. I remember back, I was taking a project in leadership. Spiritual project. And I had so many challenges in ministry. I learned away with a good excuse. But God spoke to me and he told me, go back to my school. Because I was doing a project and I had to qualify for the next level. 
where are you spiritually what is the level of your maturity because you are supposed to set uh, your standards as per your level of maturity when we speak when children speak paul said uh, when i was a child i did as a child i spoke like a child but when i grew up everything changed my actions the way i speak you know some people how they speak is because they are children when you mature you speak god's language god's language is a positive language he calls things which are not as if they were they are words you don't allow them to come out of your mouth because you know that words have the power of life and death so you don't speak care as words what is the level of your maturity another parameter that helps you to set your standard is your calling is your mandate is your assignment in this life the bible says that we are supposed to live a life that is worthy of the calling that we have received praise the name of the living god and the bible says that when gifts were given grace was apportioned that means there is a grace upon my life because of the calling that i have received from god and i'm supposed to set my standards as per that calling so i don't compare myself with other people they may be holding the same title but it's not about titles praise the name of the living god there is something more than the titles i remember when god spoke to me about being called into the apostolic ministry i took 10 years before i was even ordained into that apostolic office and i am not even yet there do you know the calling the mandate god has given to you so that you may be able to set your standard as per that calling so that you are able to know that as jesus was supposed to take a cup because of his assignment to redeem us there is also a cup i must also be able to partake uh, because of the assignment uh, and the mandate uh, that is upon my life may you receive the grace to set your standard uh, and not compare yourself uh, with anyone else uh, in the mighty name of jesus uh, we are in a church where we compare ourselves uh, with other people even when we are giving jesus said this woman has given more than everyone else because everyone else they give money out of their riches but this woman has given all that she had for her living she set her standard not because she gave a lot of money but according to the level of blessing upon her life she was able to set a standard you don't just give a thousand shillings because it is the biggest note because God does not just look at what you are dropping uh, in the offering bag. Uh, he looks at what he has given unto you before he receives uh, what you are giving to him. He knows the level he has laced you. Many people can write checks anywhere else, but not in church. Because in church, who, who else is writing checks? But what is your standard? If God has raised you to a certain level, the Bible says, because you do not serve me with joy in times of prosperity, then shall you serve your enemies. God has an expectation every time he is raising you. He has an expectation uh, over your life uh, that you are going to be fruitful. You are going to be useful. Lead at your own time. Uh, the Bible in the book of Isaiah chapter 5. Uh, every time God is helping your life to rise he is doing it with an expectation that you are going to be fruitful in the kingdom and that is why you must set your standard according to the level of blessing that god has given unto you that every time money is being laced in the church it will be a shame for people to struggle to buy an equipment of twenty thousand, and you know that you can get into a hotel and spend 20,000 and you don't feel it. But when it comes to the church, 
you say we need to do a fundraising whereas you know this is something i can lift my hand and tell my bishop do not be worried about that continue preaching i'll take care of it praise the name of the living god because it's not pride it's not showing off it is taking responsibility because you know god has raised me to a certain level where i can be able to take uh, certain uh, responsibilities uh, in the kingdom receive the grace today and take your position in the mighty name of jesus i want to speak to those who have a calling upon their life may you set your standard and callings when we talk about callings many people think it's just about those who have been called to preach no the church now is going to take all the mountains of influence we are going for the seven mountains god is positioning men and women everywhere that is why even as we are going on here there are other people in a business meeting this morning why because god is preparing the church uh, to take all the mountains these are not the days uh, we always concentrated uh, with the mountain of faith uh, and we became so spiritual na tukaimba nyimbo ambazo tukasema ngoboka nyume the no jikalele raini sijui hiyo ni kusema nini sasa na greek bana sifa sana that i'm going to fry and live in the air no you cannot fry and live in the air you need to come back here and own a plot and build a house praise the name of the living god hallelujah and so we must train uh, the church uh, because the bible says uh, in mount zion the house of jacob uh, will possess uh, their possessions uh, we must be able to to, to possess uh, our possession we are living in a season uh, of wealth transfer god is transferring uh, the wealth of the wicked uh, to the righteous and when god is transferring the wealth it's not about their money in the bank account it is a means they use to get resources god is bringing a shake up so that there can be divine exchange praise the name of the living god so some people are being called in the marketplace some people are being called in the mountain of governance like daniel daniel was called in the mountain of governance and he prayed three times every day he set a very high standard of spirituality though he was called in the mountain of governance some people think you only need to be spiritual when you are in the mountain of faith but i can tell you there are even greater battles in the other mountains there are battles uh, in the mountain of business uh, because there are people who have raised uh, their altars there praise the name of the living god kuna mtu mmoja alisema wa kristo ni mboga kwetu kwa sababu sisi tuko na majini na wao hawana roho ha yani christians are like cabbage to us because we have our own ha? water spirits but they don't have the holy spirit so if you are not well equipped because of the calling because of the mandate you don't know how to pray you don't know how to fast you don't know how to wage warfare you are going to be fought and you are going to compromise and you are going to leave your faith for you to be able to excel not in god's way not in kingdom way but you are you are going to lose your faith and then continue excelling in that mountain but Jesus said, what will it profit a man if you receive the whole world and you lose uh, your own soul? So you need to know how to excel in the area of your calling. May you receive the grace to set the standard uh, in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, and know that when I rise higher, there will be higher devils uh, that are going to come to me in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, remember when Daniel was praying, uh, it was the prince of Persia that he was saying this man cannot receive his answer to his prayer and he was in the mountain of governance but he was able to fight and he was able to receive victory i want to declare that you're also going to receive victory as you set your standard he was on a 21 day fast 
very rarely you had you hear people in business in in governance and in other areas of calling uh, saying that i am in a long fast because i need god to vindicate me the battles i am facing time to learn to your pastor may not be there always and if it is there there is your personal sacrifice and commitment that is required may you set your standard when you know that god has called me to rise in this area may you bless yourself and fortify yourself with the graces uh, that will be required uh, for you to be able to rise uh, in that area of calling uh, because we are in a season a ripe season a kairos moment when god wants to raise men and women who are going to represent him uh, in every mountain for the mountain of the lord's temple will be lifted uh, as a chief among all the mountains and the nation will stream and they will come to the mountain of the lord the mountain of faith is the highest mountain because life is spiritual the mountain of faith commands all the other mountains and that is why when we come to church the bible says those who go to zion they shall move from strength to strength they shall be clothed with the power that they require to go and conquer their mountain may you receive the grace that you need uh, to go and conquer after this conference uh, i commission you i release you that you may go and conquer your mountain uh, Caleb said, uh, yes, I was 40 years uh, when God gave me a promise. Uh, but even now, I am still strong. Uh, Joshua, give me my mountain. Uh, the mountain uh, that the Lord promised me. Oh, it doesn't matter how many years you have been there. But may God give you the strength uh, in the mountain name of Jesus. Uh, go and take your mountain uh, in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, don't surrender your mountain. Uh, because of age because you have been there for a long time god is going to use the young and the old that is what joel promised that the outpouring of the spirit will be both to the young and to the old there will be no even servants there will be no social status everyone can be used of god uh, in this season uh, if they are willing uh, to set uh, the right standards uh, that are required for their mandate may you receive the grace that you require in the mighty name of jesus uh, and tell god uh, i am going to set my own standards uh, in the mighty name of jesus uh, the jesus we are talking about the messiah who was anointed uh, the bible says when time came uh, he went to john the baptist uh, and number one he was baptized uh, to fulfill all righteousness uh, and after that uh, the bible says the spirit of god came upon him uh, and he led him to the desert uh, to fast uh, for 40 days uh, and after 40 days uh, he said uh, the spirit of the sovereign lord is upon me because he has anointed me even jesus was able to set a standard for him to be on a mountain for 40 days to receive the anointing for his mandate for his assignment some people will say oh jesus fasted for me but the same jesus said whoever wants to follow me they must also carry their cross and follow me praise the name of the living god jesus has opened the door for us but he is telling us also come and work out your salvation with fear and trembling you know if i'm here and i give uh, some ingredients to cook a cake to each one of you what is required to cook a cake with flour eggs milk sugar baking powder you know some men are wondering are all these things put in a cake so if you give them to a man to go and bring a cake back to you they are going to cook a pancake because working it out will be a tall order for some people to be able to cook a cake there are some ingredients the promises that we have been given 
that are supposed to help us now to rise in this kingdom we must be able to work them out the bible says that the new covenant has superior promises than the old covenant but how do you activate these promises and cause them to become a reality and walk in them there must be a way to be able to set our standards i am here to pray that god will give me the grace and god will give you the grace uh, to be able to set the standards uh, that are required of you when god saved me i was a youth i was about 20 years of age and you know as a young person the way you want to play around with things and you are not serious god came and spoke to me and he told me kimani if you want me to be serious with you you must be serious with me there are standards i require from you because of what you carry i didn't know what i carried i thought i was just an ordinary person i thought i just came to be saved and go to heaven but you see god has a special plan for each one of us that is why you don't need to compare yourself there is a special plan for you and you need to download that plan and tell god what is required for me to fulfill this plan and to become all that you want me to be i started to downloading my divine plan sometimes i felt it's like i'm not up to the task Sometimes I felt intimidated by the things that God was speaking to me. I felt I don't deserve. I felt I cannot make it. But God spoke to me and he told me, Your sufficiency is in me. Your sufficiency is not in yourself. Your sufficiency is in God. It is God who helps you to build the capacity that is required for you to fulfill your mandate and your assignment. If you depend on yourself, you are going to be overwhelmed. If you depend on the arm of the flesh, you are going to give up. By the time I started opening up my life to God, He started changing my life. I was a warm. I was weak I was timid I was fearful I was not the kind of people who could stand before people and speak but God started changing my life he started transforming my life and helping me to build the capacity that was required for me to be able to fulfill the mandate and even today I'm still working out those standards paul said one thing i do is i forget what is behind and i press on that i may get hold of that which christ jesus has gotten hold for me you must continue pressing on in the mighty name of jesus oh church let us raise a bar higher that when you say you are born again people will see and they will say this is a different person from how we knew him this person has set very high standards of salvation Isaiah chapter 62 verse 1 the Bible says Isaiah 62 and verse 1 for Zion's sake I will not keep silent for Jerusalem's sake I will not remain quiet till her vindication shines out like the dawn her salvation like a blazing torch God will not be silent uh, until our light shines, uh, until our salvation shines uh, in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, when your light shines, uh, it is your success uh, that is going to shine uh, and cause men uh, to come to Jesus, uh, to be attracted to Jesus. I say you can preach the gospel by intimidation, by telling people if you don't get saved, you are going to go to hell. But you can also preach the gospel by attraction when people see the light in your life the success in your life 
when people see how god uh, has been able to change you and to lift you for the bible says uh, because you have hated wickedness uh, and you have loved righteousness uh, the lord your god has anointed you with an anointing of joy to lift you above uh, your companions uh, when god uh, starts lifting you up uh, in the mighty name of jesus uh, they shall come and hold your hand and tell you we need your god we have seen how he has raised you from a humble beginning we need to know the secret of your life in the mighty name of jesus you are right must shine in this generation in the mighty name of jesus let your light shine among men so that they may see the good deeds that you have done and they'll be able to see that it is the lord who is helping you and they shall love the lord your god and they will desire to follow him not because they are intimidated to go to hell but because they love what the lord is doing with your life they are watching your space and they can see you are right is shining brighter and brighter praise the name of the living god uh, even after this conference uh, may your light right continue to shine uh, brighter and brighter and brighter in the name of jesus uh, until the full dawn uh, until you reach the the, the peak uh, of your destiny in the mighty name of jesus uh, oh god uh, give us the grace uh, to set the standards of our salvation uh, to set the standards of our calling uh, in the mighty name of jesus uh, the mandate you have given us uh, requires a certain standard uh, of commitment portal timothy give uh, thyself holy and everyone will see your progress when you are committed uh, to your cause when you are dedicated uh, the bible says uh, diligent hands will rule when you are diligent and you are not slothful in business god will cause you to rise up in the mighty name of jesus and to take your possession in the mighty name of jesus as we continue to grow and leave space for the younger ones who are coming there is a great harvest that god wants to bring into the church but it will be very unfortunate when the young ones who are born again when they come in the church and they see our strife they see our jealousy they see our division they see our infighting and then they will be wondering why did we end up in the church it's better where we were because drunkards are friends praise the name of the living god they buy beer for one another even when they don't know one another praise the name of the living god some drunkards have felt a lot of warmth in the nightclubs so when they come in the church and they find find us uh, full of jealousy praise the name of the living god and fighting what are they going to do and they have been watching you for the last 10 20 years and they decide to follow you in the church but when they land into the church uh, they come to find that we are not yet changed praise the name of the living god a story is given of a prostitute who decided to be born again and he went to a church she went to a church but surprisingly she found that one of her customers is a leader in the church and now she was wondering what do i do i have found my customer here what a shame praise the name of the living god what a shame praise the name of the living god the church must raise a bar in this season and that is where the bible says judgment will first begin in the house of god in the book of ezekiel the destroying angel was told begin with the elders who are sitting in front there why because they are responsible they did not stand in the gap they did not lead the way they did not do what was necessary to be done for salvation uh, to be experienced uh, in the land when people follow you you are way of life paul was telling timothy follow my way of life praise the name of the living god watch me what i do live the kind of life uh, that i live but in our generation 
it is the end that justifies the means but not the means that justifies the end in our generation people don't care you can do anything for you to rise you can do anything for you to fill members in your church it doesn't matter how you manipulate or where you get the powers from as long as you have a following it's okay the means does not matter but i want to tell you the means is your testimony praise the name of the living god hallelujah god want to raise you in a way that you can stand before men and testify this is how i walked with god this is how i passed the test praise the name of the living god hallelujah this is how i was able to fight my battles this is how i got where i am the means is your testimony praise the name of the living god how will people come and benchmark with your life if you cannot be able to explain to them of your walk with god and how you got where you are praise the name of the living god may god give us a grace uh, to raise the bar from today that is my prayer for the church in kenya that we are not going to miss uh, this great door that god has opened for us uh, as i said yesterday i'm still very happy that god is speaking the same prophecies uh, he spoke 20 years ago 30 years ago that kenya is a springboard of revival and god is still watching uh, and he is saying uh, this is your time kenya rise up uh, and become uh, what i wanted you to be it has also been my cry that i'll not miss my original purpose uh, because uh, i know that in this kingdom you can lose uh, your original purpose praise the name of the living god esther was told uh, if you are not willing to pay the cost if you are fearing god will raise another person these people are not going to perish uh, but you and your family are going to suffer if kenya will miss uh, her opportunity to become what god has called us to be we are going to suffer as a nation and God can still go to another place uh, and raise the uh, people who love him uh, and are willing uh, to serve his purposes. Uh. Kenya, may we raise the bar of salvation. Uh. May we commit ourselves uh, to raise the standards uh, and set the standards uh, of our mandate, uh, of our assignment. Uh. There are so many things that are counterfeit uh, in our generation. Uh. Paul spoke about counterfeit apostles. Uh. That means uh, we could have people in their calling uh, but they are just counterfeiter in the mighty name of Jesus. But God is raising the original version in the name of Jesus of every calling, of every officer, of every mandate in the name of Jesus. May you become an original version in the name of Jesus. I refuse to be a counterfeit. I will set the standards that are required of me. Can you open your mouth wherever you are and tell God, uh, I refuse to be a counterfeit believer, a counterfeit minister. I am here, Lord. Uh, I will uh, set the standards uh, that are required of me in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, some of you, God has been speaking to you of what you are supposed to do, but you feel uh, as if it's not manageable, it's not doable. May you receive the grace to set the required standards uh, in the mighty name of jesus uh, for your ministry in the name of jesus uh, as a believer sometimes you wonder who to call for salvation uh, because even them that are born again uh, oh my god uh, the standards are too low shatara baganda rimahanda and we keep on having the same people in the altar call uh, we keep on having the same people answering the salvation altar call uh, because every time the word is preached uh, they see themselves as in a mirror and they see they have not been able to set uh, the right standards uh, but i declare upon you today may god give you the grace uh, to set the required standards uh, those who are watching me those who are in this arena i pray for grace uh, in the mighty name of jesus uh, yes uh, that prophetic office uh, must be occupied uh, by authentic prophets uh, in the name of jesus uh, 
people who can receive from God uh, and they can expose uh, the plans of the enemy even in the whole nation uh, so that the enemy is not able to hide uh, in our nation uh, as it was in the time of Elisha that Elisha was able to expose uh, the plans of the enemy may God raise uh, authentic prophets uh, in the mighty name of Jesus uh, who are able to, uh, to expose uh, the agendas of the enemy may God raise authentic apostles uh, the apostolic ministry is being restored back to the church uh, because the same ministry that was used uh, to usher in the church uh, is being restored back uh, to prepare the church uh, for the second coming uh, of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, may God raise authentic teachers. Uh, oh my God. Uh, the Bible says when Israel did not have one to teach the law. They did not have a true God. Uh, how shall we have a true God in our generation. Uh, when we don't have teachers. Uh, I have had many few. I have had few people saying. Uh, I have been called to be a teacher. Does it mean there are no teachers in our time. Uh, may God help us to occupy this office again. Uh, God is restoring uh, the teaching anointing uh, in the mighty name of Jesus uh, so that we may be able to rise uh, and teach uh, the unadulterated gospel uh, in the mighty name of Jesus. Have mercy, Lord, that what you want me to become, uh, I'll not be a counterfeiter. Uh, I'll be an original. I'll be a true representation uh, of what heaven wants me to be. You'll not be asking, uh, whom shall I send? Uh, because I'll be prepared. Uh, I'll be sanctified. Uh, I'll be set apart. Uh, I'll be holy. Shatarabaganda bahanda. Shatarabaganda rima. Prepare to do every good work. Uh, Shatarabaganda rima, reka baganda ba shanda ba, reka baganda raba shanda ba, reka baganda. Rise up on your feet wherever you are. Shatarabaganda, as I pray this final prayer. Shatarabaganda, I have a cry in my heart uh, that the standard will be raised once again. Uh, that when we have a gathering, uh, Shatarabaganda rima, even when we gather in our church. Uh, it will not just be an, an, another gathering uh, but we are going to see the hand of God uh, we are going to see the glory of God uh, when I see the dedication of the temple that even the priests themselves uh, they were not able to stand uh, because the glory of the Lord uh, filled the temple shall we see the glory of God again uh, filling the temple filling our houses of worship uh, in the name of Jesus uh, that no one is able to stand because the cloud of glory is so heavy and the Lord has taken over the service uh, in the mighty name of Jesus uh, because we have consecrated ourselves uh, as it was said of Moses uh, when the Israelites were supposed to meet God uh, Moses was told uh, consecrate the people in the mighty name of Jesus uh, prepare them uh, that he can be able to meet with me in the mighty name of Jesus uh, can we prepare a people who are ready to meet their maker in the mighty name of Jesus uh, but not a people when their maker appears uh, they are going to run out of the church uh, when the glory appears uh, they are going to find their way out uh, may God prepare us uh, that we may raise the standards uh, even in our churches uh, even in our congregations uh, in the mighty name of Jesus uh, may God uh, raise the people who are going to restore the required standards uh, without compromise Shatarabaganda uh, Rekabaganda God is building a church uh, within the church uh, He spoke to us the, the other day and He told us uh, there is a church He is building uh, within the church uh, there is a church uh, that is emerging uh, within the church uh, there are uh, people that he is raising uh, for the bible says uh, when he comes uh, he'll be like a refiner's fire or like a rambler's soap uh, so that he can prepare a uh, people who can offer sacrifices uh, unto him uh, as it was uh, in the beginning uh, he is coming back uh, but he is going to come back uh, as a refiner of silver like around our sopa 
that he can prepare people who are going to offer sacrifices uh, as it was in the beginning uh, sacrifices uh, that are going to be acceptable before him uh, in the mighty name of jesus uh. father i thank you for giving me an opportunity to deliver the word uh, that you put in my heart uh, for Emma first uh, in the mighty name of jesus uh, oh god uh, may you take this word uh, even by the by your holy spirit uh, and take your people deeper and deeper in meditation uh, in the name of jesus uh, holy spirit now take this word uh, and in meditation uh, speak to us individually not comparing ourselves uh, in the mighty name of jesus uh, and help us lord uh, to set uh, the standards uh, that you require oh god uh, somebody is reasoning uh, and they only have heard from you oh god uh, even those who are watching online uh, from different parts of the world uh, i declare and declare that in the name of jesus uh, there is a church uh, that is rising uh, within the church uh, there is a remnant uh, in the mighty name of jesus uh, there is a remnant 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 uh, in the mighty name of jesus they have not bowed their knee to any idol they have not bowed their knee to any bar and they are saying lord here i am send me lord i pray for them that they shall not give up they shall not feel that the standards are too high because your grace is sufficient for it is not by mind nor by power that none of us is going to be discouraged because you are a god of standards and you don't throw your standards you only gives us grace to set those standards because the scriptures cannot be broken help us lord i commission everyone who have had this word to go and set their standards after this lemma fest let there be transformation you have been you have called us to be like jesus to be transformed oh god let that grace of transformation rest upon the church we give you glory we give you honor in jesus name we pray amen